Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Relics, and today we're going to go over the LA Kings' first game of the playoffs for the 2024 season. Uh, obviously, if you guys know, we are going against the Edmonton Oilers. Uh, first round of the series. Uh, definitely uh, one of those games that you want to you want to show more of a performance. Um, not to say that there was a lack of scoring. The Oilers actually won the game seven to four against the LA Kings. We we actually made it a little bit closer than it looked. One goal was an empty net as well, so it was like a four six game really. Um, but the Kings definitely didn't play their best game. Now, what was what what's part of the concern? Well, what, we're going to talk about that here. So uh, first, I want to start off with the pregame though. Let's take a look at this. So here we have, and excuse the the way it's angled, I took these pictures off my TV. So um, notable games missed. You guys can see at the top of the screen. Last two post seasons, um, these players uh, play impact on our team, and or at least they should be, and they were missing in some games last two seasons. So as you guys can see, Jordan Spence, four games. Uh, not so much of a big deal just because the way Spence has been playing this year hasn't been up to par. So I'm not worried about Spence, but I am worried about the other guys. Victor Arvidsson had missed seven games in 2022. And that's a big deal because he is one of our best scorers on the team when he is healthy. Uh, next up is Drew Doughty. He missed seven games in 2022 as well. Again, our number one defenseman. And if he's not in, then who's doing the job? Obviously, I was happy when Sean Dursey came up and played for us. But at the same time, we're still missing guys who are you know key scorers. Hence the reason why both Spence and Doughty being out makes a huge difference. Um, then you go to Blake Lazat. Last year, three, three games missed. Again, a huge... Uh, huge player on the PK. I discussed it uh, in the past couple of videos that Blake Lazat needs more recognition. He is the unsung hero of the team and he needs to be in the lineup because he is one of our best PKers and four checkers. Uh, without him, for sure, the Kings would be a totally different team. And then last but not least is Kevin Fiala, three games last year. Um, he missed a few games and those few games are enough for the Oilers to get you know a lead in the series and you know when you when you lose your best scores including Arvidsson it makes a huge difference on you know who's me who's gonna be scoring in the game and who's being playing defense so that's just the Kings health you know going into this game this was taken before the game started um, but I also want to look at these guys Ken Fiala and Quinton Byfield to me to me and I even said it uh, towards the beginning of the year during the pre uh, preseason. These two players, these are the X factor players of the of the team. They are the guys who are going to make or break our playoff runs. At least in my opinion, uh, Kevin Fiala, obviously, um, he he's one of our top scorers. So obviously, he needs to be one of the guys who needs to be scoring on a constant basis. And then, of course, Quinton Byfield, who's having a career season compared to his past so many years of disappointment. Uh, he turned this year around for sure. Ever since preseason, I thought he was one of our best players. However, in the last quarter of the season, I will not deny that he has not been very active as far as scoring. He has not been very energetic like he was the first three quarters of the season. So it is a disappointment seeing him go into the playoffs, you know, not being able to score, you know, let alone score goals. You know, I don't care that he's not scoring goals. He did get his 20th on the last game. But, you know, making plays, making plays, getting on the four check, using his body. I thought Byfield was doing that all season, but the last quarter just wasn't showing it. So I definitely think these two, whether they play together or they play on separate lines, it doesn't matter. These two are the players I'm looking at to make the difference in the playoffs. Um, so, going into the game, um, I thought the Kings and Oilers were kind of lopsided. Um, Oilers definitely controlled the majority of the game, without a doubt. Anyone can see it. And as the game went along, they definitely controlled more and more territory, getting the first uh, first couple goals and then obviously you know they just destroyed us so 
Um, here's your final score. LA Kings 4, Edmonton 7. Uh, 37 shots for the LA Kings, 45 for the Oilers. Um, it was looking like the Oilers were going to get like 50 to 60 shots uh, based on the way the game was going. But the LA Kings definitely put up a fight towards the end after it was already too late. Um, we actually made it a 4-6 game with a minute, I think a minute and like 11 seconds left in the game. So it's not like we didn't have a chance to like pull the goalie and come back. But by that time, you know, the, the hole's already dug. We're already inside, and there's almost no way to come back. If, if if we pulled off a miracle, you know, that'd be like the highlight of the entire playoffs. But obviously, that's not going to happen. So, um, Kings need to put more... Again, the key word I use for the season is effort. The Kings need to put more effort in as far as, you know, playing smart and being on top of watch their coverage. Uh, if I had to say why we lost this game it's definitely because of the defenseman uh the defenseman horrible coverage i cannot say there's a single guy on the team that that played great honestly um all six d-men did not play a good game they all were disappointing um if i had to choose someone to be the worst i probably would say probably mikey anderson he's supposed to be our top shutdown guy but unfortunately he he let a lot of uh, plays go. Uh, I know it's Connor McDavid, but you can't be deked. You're a top defenseman. You gotta be on top of the game. And the fact that he was getting beat by McDavid, Henrique, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, it's just disappointing to see. And I think not just him, but everyone. Everyone was getting beat. I know Dowdy let in one. I think it was the third goal, uh, McDavid to Hyman. Dowdy try to stick handle it with only one hand and McDavid got full control of the puck play made from behind the net and then gave it to Hyman for the third goal um definitely needs to play a, a stronger game all of them and um Roy and Gavrikov I think their defensive coverage not not their defensive plays or their hitting their physicality but their defensive coverage watching the back door watching their man I think those two were the worst defensemen on the ice today um they were definitely the biggest disappointment as far as defensive coverage and i've said it multiple times this season too that roy specifically has horrible defensive coverage everyone gives him praise for how he defends on other plays like board battles i don't deny he can be good in board battles but it's the defensive coverage in front of the net that him and gavrikov just suffer and unfortunately what half the goals were backdoor plays and and it's just disappointing to see that the defenseman couldn't pick up on that all game long and that's why the Oilers you know pretty much got half their goals if not more of their goals because of the backdoor plays um so here's the stats of the game real quick uh faceoffs again um disappointing to see I actually take a look at the faceoffs <coughs> excuse me and Kopitar finished with a 48%, Deneau with a 38%. Like, that's pretty disappointing. And then, of course, Dubois, you know, also 47%. So your top centermen who are supposed to be winning your face-offs are the ones who are actually losing the face-offs. Arvidsson got one win. Uh, Lazat won his with 60%. Um, Byfield took a face-off. He won his. So your top guys are not taking the face-offs and winning them. And I noticed that, too. I was noticing that from the very start of the game, uh, Deneau versus McDavid. Deneau was mo losing a lot of his faceoffs to Connor McDavid. And that's a bad sign because both Kopi and Deneau are supposed to be your defensive uh, centermen. But if they're losing the faceoffs, then, you know, how are we supposed to provide any offense if we don't have the puck? And I think McDavid and the Oilers had the possession all night long. And the faceoffs are a big part of that. I know it's only 44 to 56% you know difference but in the grand scheme of things it's where you take the face-offs that matter um and unfortunately you know unfortunately the the top players for the kings they didn't get it done today honestly uh, as you guys can also see the power play was not good uh zero for two um i don't think the kings really did anything on the power play uh, if i had to say you know anything positive about the power play it's you know, you know, no, there is no positive. There is no positive on the power play. 
Uh, King's power play looked like trash. I've mentioned it all season that it does look like trash for the most part. Um, our percentage on the season was lucky to be average on the season, but uh, overall, it needs work. Um, power plays could make one power play goal could make the difference in every game, and unfortunately, if you guys look at the Oilers side, seventy five percent they went three for four. Uh, Kings were very undisciplined. Uh, Dubois ended up with two minor penalties. Uh, regardless of you know frustrations or you know who's hitting who you gotta stay disciplined and stay out of the box and unfortunately the Oilers are one of the best teams in the league on the power play so giving them power play opportunities is definitely going to lose us the game so as you guys can see those three goals alone you know is like more than enough for the Oilers to just win the game uh, I know it was a four or seven loss for the Kings, but three power play goals, you know, that makes it a four three game. If the Kings were, you know, if they it kept them to even strength, but that obviously is not the case. Um, hits sixty seven to forty five. Uh, I don't believe those hit that hit counter. To be honest, uh, playoffs are exaggerated. Uh, even the smallest little nudges are con considered hits. So I definitely don't think. The 67 to 45 is uh, accurate enough. Honestly, it's probably more like high 50 hits to high 40 or low 40s for the Oilers. Um, Kings, I think, sometimes went out of their way to do little hits that don't really matter. Um, we we gave up a lot of odd man rushes, which you know is very unfortunate because uh, if you give the Oilers too many opportunities, of course they're going to keep scoring. And they did score on a couple two-on-one uh, en entries into the zone. So definitely need to pick and choose when to pinch or when to throw your body around. And, you know, leave the hitting to the four checkers. Not so much as, you know, trying to keep the puck in the zone and, you know, try to hope, you know, as they say, hope play, right? Try to make something out of it. Hope that something happens your that goes your way. And I think... That's one of the issues that we face today as well. And then lastly, of course, black block shots. Um, not as many block shots as I thought the Kings would get. Uh, a little disappointing in that because, like I said, the defensive coverage was just terrible by all six D-man. And I think the Oilers having more block shots than us, considering they had more shots on goal, uh, I think that's just a disappointment. Um, for sure, the Kings did not pick and choose their right shots. They kept shooting the guys right in front of their faces. Uh, again, it just takes a fake shot to move around the defender and then wait for a lane to open up or, you know, shoot for rebound when you have the chance, not wait for the perfect shot or the perfect pass. And unfortunately, the Kings don't really know that. They don't really work under that structure. And so they keep shooting into the defenders and then it's just a you know one and done play. There's no second opportunities. There are opportunities on the plays that the Kings can pick up on and I think the Kings definitely need to work on that. I've mentioned it throughout the season that the Kings do suck at getting rebounds. And unfortunately, we need to get more of those. We need to get more opportunities, uh, shot rebounds, you know, greasy ones, greasy goals. I don't care if you have to hit the goalie in the process. You know, as long as we are causing chaos in front of the net, that's what really matters. And unfortunately, that's not where the Kings were playing at. We didn't really get enough screens in front of the net today or, or even throughout the entire season. So going forward, I hope the Kings realize that because, you know, half our goals were pretty gre greasy goals. So um, that's just the way things went. And that's, you know, that's just the game in a nutshell. Uh, here's your stars of the game, really. There's, you know, there's three stars of the game, which were uh, Hyman with his hat trick, McDavid and... Evan Bouchard, but obviously Drysdale is just right up there, you know, just like the other three because he is one of their star players. And unfortunately, you know, just like that, <laughs> all four, all three of those guys, uh, Connor McDavid, Zach Hyman, and Evan Bouchard, all of a sudden are leading the league in playoff scoring after one game. Uh, I believe it was Jake DeBrusque who was leading the league with four points, but all of a sudden, Connor McDavid, five assists, Zach Hyman, three goals with hat trick, one assist, and Bouchard with four assists. So it makes a huge difference when their top players are being their top players and our top guys are not even showing up to work. So there you go. 
there's your stars of the game for sure. Uh, I was absolutely amazed by their plays for sure. Uh, all four of these guys, including other players too, like Corey Perry being physical. I didn't really see Evander Kane as much, but uh, Adam Henrique, he too. Again, former Ducks. You know, that rivalry is still there. Um, they played pretty good games, you know. Um, as far as Skinner is concerned, I thought Jeff, uh, Jeff Skinner, uh, Stuart Skinner had played a pretty solid game up until the end where we got a couple of good goals. But other than that, I thought he played a great game in net. And that's something we need to fix going forward. Uh, so, again, here's your decor for the LA Kings. And, you know, it's a disappointment. It's a disappointment that this is what we have to work with, to be honest. Uh, again, Dowdy was our only defenseman. I, I went over the team awards earlier today, or earlier in another video, saying that how he is the most outstanding defenseman, and it was a no-brainer. None of the other five are even close to Dowdy. And unfortunately, if you look at the if you guys if you guys look at the the faces here, can you honestly tell me that of the uh, besides Dowdy? Of the other five, can you honestly tell me that I, either any of them are considering number two or even a number three defenseman? Uh, to be honest, I don't. I really don't. Um, yeah, I, I look at these faces and I'm like, this is a pretty weak decor. Uh, most of them are just straight up defensive, if not uh, just straight up two ways. Uh, Jordan Spence on the far right needs to be better. He... He was kept pretty much over Sean Dursey for offensive defensemen. And unless he starts picking up his game offensively, you know, I'm not seeing the King going far in the playoffs. Uh, all these guys, all these guys need to pinch in a little bit more, you know, both offensively and got to watch the defense. Uh, for sure, it was a big issue today. All six of them were disappointments. So going forward, I definitely think... If we can fix the defensive coverages, not so much as defending the rush. I know the rush was an issue today, but if the Kings can fix the defensive coverage in front of the net and prevent backdoor plays like they did, you know, or like they have, all, you know, pretty much all season, then I think the Oilers won't be able to do more backdoor plays. Um, I believe Hyman got all of his goals because of right in front of the net, because if not backdoor, because the defensive coverage was not there. Um, I think four of the goals for the Oilers were all open man. You know, no one's watching them, regardless if it was power play or not. And so these six guys, they need to pick up their game. And if they can do that, I think the Kings have a chance to, you know, not just win the next game, but they can have a chance to win the playoff series. So that's it for now. Uh, that's the breakdown for the first game. Again, it's only one. It's only one game. Um, I really do hope the Kings can study the game and review what needs to be fixed and then come out swinging in the next one. I said it in my last video that we needed to get the first goal because the Kings aren't going to be goal scoring like crazy, right? So we need to get the lead when we can and defend it. That's, that's how the Kings are going to win their games. Um... As far as anything else is concerned, I just want to see more. I just want to see more effort. Again, that's just my key word for this year, effort. I want to see more effort from all players, all of them. And specifically, players like Leferriere, um, Leferriere, Spence, you know, the young guys. And that's something I also didn't mention is Leferriere was kind of invisible. Again, we are keeping him. We chose him out of training camp to play the whole year on the team instead of players like Akil Thomas, who, by the way, was sent down and is playing on Ontario and Stove with the Kings. We need the young guys to pinch in. It can't just be one with the veterans or the, you know, the top players. It needs to be done with everybody. And unless the young guys are pinching in you know, on the scoring, we're just not going to win the games. So that's all I have to say. That's my wrap up for our first game, but let me know what you guys think. If you enjoyed this one, hit the like button. Comment down below if you guys agree or disagree with what I have to say, um, 
Oilers fans, if you guys are watching this too, let me know what you guys think. I know you guys had a great first game. Uh, I don't deny that. In fact, I, I don't deny like like even the Dreisaitl goal. Like it was just an absolute beauty. It's Dreisaitl's office sharpshooter from a freaking bad angle, but is his goals are some of the most beautiful goals I can say I have ever seen. You know, every day, and that's why I consider Dreisaitl one of the top five centers in the league, without without question. You know, regardless if he had a bad season or a good season, it doesn't matter. He's one of the top five centers in the league, if not top three. So, you know, even though Drysdale only got two points, he still is a huge threat. And I, I still saw him make, you know, good plays. So, Kings got to do better. Um, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already either. Um, I am going to do a game, like I said, or a review of each game after they uh, come out. Come out. After they uh, finish. So, you know, stay tuned for the next one. Next game is Wednesday, 7.30. Um, and then my video will come out on Thursday. And then so on and so forth. Friday, Saturday. Uh, Friday uh, is the next game at home uh, at Crypto.com Arena. And then Sunday as well. So, it's only one game. It's only one game. There's still plenty of hockey to play. Hopefully the Kings can come back. Um, if not, then that's going to be very disappointing. Three straight years of king's losses against the oilers that i really don't want to see that i really don't so come on kings let's get together go kings go hope you guys have a great day and i'll see you guys in the next one Bye bye